Hello level 2 PE. This is part 2 of your flip vids. Uh, we are on risk management. Quote I've got there for you is a ship is safe in the harbour but that's not what ships are made for. I want you to have a bit of a think about what that means in relation to risk management and what you're going to listen to over the next few slides. All right, RAMS forms, risk management plan. A risk management plan should include an analysis of what the program is doing, why it is doing it, and how it expects to manage the risks of what it is doing. There are two types of risk, physical risk and emotional risk. Now, what you are going to be creating as part of your assessment is a complete RAMS form, and it doesn't matter which camp you're going on. Uh, you'll be creating an activity uh, for just one activity if you're on the Marlborough Sounds trip, uh, so kayaking, um, and Kaitoki it will be slightly different. Um, geography you will have a RAMS forms for one of your days as well. So with the two types of risk, physical risk, it's easier to understand largely because um, it involves some sort of injury or fitness or experience, damage to equipment, etc. So it's often it's something that you can see and it's easier to provide examples for. However, emotional risk cannot always be seen. It is generated uh, both by effort and outcome. It may be more significant than physical risk and is probably more likely to occur. Physical and emotional risks. These two types of risks cannot be uncoupled. Um, emotional risks may have physical manifestations. Physical risks may produce emotional upset with long-term consequences. During your planning process, you need to be aware and plan for both the emotional and the physical risks of your activity. You need to recognize where harm or upset may occur and devise strategies on how to eliminate, minimize, or manage them. I would like you to come up with and record on your whisk sheet an outdoor example for the last two points that I have written, which are the emotional risk but may have a physical manifestation and vice versa, the physical risk that may produce an emotional upset with long-term consequences. So I'd like you to come up with an example that you can demonstrate these uh, two key points. You could choose from any sort of challenging activity, for example, rock climbing, whitewater rafting, kayaking, ocean swimming, tramping, mountaineering, just to name a few. It doesn't matter if you haven't done them before. Uh, look at some pictures, do some reading, use your imagination. Identifying risks. So risks fall into the following three main categories. They are people, resources and equipment, and the environment. First category I'm going to talk about is people. So you need to identify who the people are. How many students, how many activity leaders and assistants, um, what experience do people have, how much supervision do you have and what ratios are there. Generally on uh, water, um, like sea kayaking, a ratio needs to be 1 to 8. On land, standard 1 to 10. If it's white water boating, it might be 1 to 3. So it does uh, have an impact on numbers. Um, you need to consider cultural considerations. So, for example, head touching, uh, swimming, site significant um, or significant site places for some cultural groups. You need to consider the physical size and shape of the person, their fitness levels, um, anxieties, concerns and fears of the people in your group, what sort of motivation is there, what are the student needs. And these include things like educational, cultural, medical and health, language abilities, behaviour, physical disabilities. And lastly, social and psychological factors. And these may include get homeitis. Okay, I want you to think about what that is and uh, we'll discuss that um, in our next lesson. Uh, risk shift, dropping your guard, unsafe acts by participants, errors of judgment by leaders. 
Our second category, resources and equipment. So, information to parents and Fano. What are the plans and systems? What are appropriate clothing and footwear? Food and drink, transport, toileting, safe drinking water, uh, water, first aid kits and knowledge, special equipment, uh, equipment maintenance, safety equipment, and sleeping arrangements. Many of which are going to be relevant to us in the Marlborough Sounds. Thirdly, and possibly most importantly, is the environment. So for us, uh, weather is a big thing, particularly in New Zealand, being an island nation surrounded by water. Um, we need to be aware of what the season is. What is the forecast? Is it sun, rain, wind, snow? What sort of terrain is it? Is it familiar or is it not? Um, is it bush, mountain, sea, river, beach? Many things to consider. Um, accessibility to help, emergency services, security, animals and insects, road use, fences and gates, do any of the sites have cultural significance, do we need consent from landowners or iwi, and particularly um, the second to last one there, do any of the sites have cultural significance, I will be expecting you to uh, investigate and find out about the areas that you're heading to, be it on the geography trip, Kaitoki and in the Marlborough Sounds, uh, whether or not there are cultural uh, specific sites that have cultural significance, because I am aware definitely in the Marlborough Sounds that there are some. Okay team, last slide, and yes, a little bit more homework. Um, you need to set up a table on an A4 piece of paper, five columns by seven as shown below, but obviously give yourself a lot more uh, working space there for writing. Um, you need to ensure that you fill in all the spaces and provide some detailed information in your responses. So you need to have two risks for each activity, activity from two different categories. So for kayaking, two risks, and it needs to be one from people, one from equipment, or one from equipment, and one from environment. Okay, identify what could go wrong. Explain why it would go wrong. Is it significant or not? Okay, um, so there's obviously uh, some situations are high risk, some are low risk. What can we do? How do we prevent it? Um, you can ideally complete this task electronically. Um, it would be great if you could share it with me on a Google Doc. However, you can handwrite it on an A4 piece of paper. Um, and bring that in as well. Um, if you do do it on a Google Doc, I'd appreciate if you printed it off and brought it into class as well. And you'll be able to use uh, this work to help you complete your RAMS form for whichever camp that you're going on. Kia ora.